Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Surface Pro 9 and talk about some of the features and how I've utilized this device so that you can make a decision as to whether this is a great option for you. In a future video, I'm going to compare this to the iPad Pro 12.9 inch device that I use quite often as well as a media consumption device is something that I edit photos on, generally just use as an all around tablet. Now, the Surface Pro 9 is a tablet, but it's also a laptop. That is the beauty of this device. And as Microsoft has moved through the different versions all the way up to what we are currently in the ninth version of this device, they've made a lot of updates and changes along the way that have really brought this to be a tablet that is a laptop and lives in both of those worlds really well. I have earlier experience with the Surface. I haven't owned every single version, but every few versions I dip back into the Surface pool and have to give it a try because of new features and of course desiring to see if the performance means my expectations based on the type of work that I do. This device is absolutely fantastic. I decided to go with it in the dark color, the graphite color, which I really like the design and the look, but I quickly realized that the best specs are not available in this color. So I chose color over specs. Of course, if you go with the platinum version, you get opportunity to have better specs, which is a huge frustration for me because I would prefer to have the darker sleek looking device and have the specs be maxed out on that as well. Because with a device like this, if you're going to do things like photo editing or some light gaming, you're going to need the best specs that you can get. Now, the Surface 9 comes in a variety of different colors. There are four options and throughout those colors are different spec options as well. If you go with the graphite, you are limited essentially to a couple of different processor options and storage options. There is the Intel i5, i7, and the Microsoft SQ3 options that are available for this device, with the i7 being the one that performs the best with the highest performance. When I initially ran benchmarks on this uh, device, the benchmarks were very impressive. I'm going to be doing a comparison video between this and the Surface Pro Studio laptop because the benchmarks were really impressive on this device. And if you're considering choosing a device like this or perhaps the Studio Pro laptop that Microsoft offers, there's some things to consider and I'll cover those in that comparison video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel here because it's not only just this video, I take this device and compare it to other devices as well, which are common devices that somebody might choose as an alternative to something like the Surface 9. So the Surface Pro 9 in my experiences have been great and I'll talk about those as soon as we finish off with the specs. So this is the i7 device. So this is the highest performing processor that you can get in the Surface Pro 9. And this is the 16 gigabyte RAM, 512 gigabyte storage option, which is a Wi-Fi enabled device. It doesn't have LTE or uh, 5G. The things that I was frustrated about is the 512 gigs of storage. As far as the highest amount of storage goes, 512 just is not that much. Most tablets that you buy these days that don't have full-fledged Windows operating systems are going to have at least a terabyte, if not two terabyte storage options. And so this was fairly limiting for me. And I know that I could have gone with the platinum option and gotten up to one terabyte, but I would have sacrificed the color option. And to me, Microsoft, if you're listening, which you're probably not, please have the color options available in all the performance styles. I think it's just, it makes sense. Most of the other manufacturers are doing that. I would have loved to have gotten this in the 32 gigabyte RAM, one terabyte option. The primary things that I jumped in and started doing on this device was photo editing. I take my tablet, type of devices with me when I shoot photos and I load photos right into Adobe Lightroom and I start my editing. And I love having a touch screen and being able to make changes to those photos on this screen very easily without having to go in and use a mouse or anything like that. I do really love this mouse, but it isn't necessary to edit your photos. You can simply do this all with the touch screen and it's a great experience on this device. So I will load photos onto it and edit those photos photos and then export them and send them over to a mobile device so that I can share them to social media. That is primarily what I use a tablet for, aside from, of course, some social media and web browsing, email and stuff like that. This device is absolutely fantastic for all of those things. 
being that it runs Windows 11, you get everything that Windows 11 has to offer in a tablet, as well as touchscreen and a very portable style device, which is limiting in other devices, such as an iPad, where it doesn't have the ability to install full applications. You have to hope that the applications that you use have a full version available on iPad OS. Thankfully for photo editing, it does. So when it came to editing photos on this device, the experience was really great because it's what I would expect from a computer, not something that perhaps could be limited by the fact that it's a tablet or a smartphone. Having all those features within the applications that I use and having the touchscreen capability is really nice. Now, the battery performance on this device is pretty good. I would say for what this device is, it's absolutely fantastic battery life, but it does suffer from things like most other Windows devices, whereas when you're not plugged into power, you're not getting the best performance. When I was exporting photos out of Lightroom, I noticed a substantial dip in performance when I was on battery power as compared to being plugged in but not as big of a discrepancy as I usually see in most other Windows laptops because of the integrated graphics that this device has. It's a little bit different than when you have a separate graphics card in there and the separate graphics card going into different performance modes. Yes, this does go into different performance modes, whether you're plugged in or unplugged running off a of battery, but it's not as substantial of a jump in my experiences. Things that I was really impressed outside of photo editing on this device was just how responsive everything was. Was. As it being a tablet that has a full version of Windows and laptop-like features, I'm expecting the experience just not to be as good. That's how it has always been in the past with Surface devices for me. There's been some sort of a discrepancy, but with the Intel chips being as good as they are these days, the performance was very impressive. The single and multi-core performance out of this device is actually really great. When I first ran the benchmarks and saw those numbers, it ran me down a rabbit hole of looking at how performance was in all of the apps. Is this a vanity metric or is the performance that I see in the benchmarks actually showing up in real use? Well, in photo editing, it most definitely did. The performance I got out of this device when editing photos and exporting them was really good. So I went and started looking at web browsing and general device usage, and never did this device even cough at me once. The performance was absolutely fantastic, whether I was plugged in or unplugged. Several times I took this to the coffee shop without a power connector, which is something I usually never do with a Windows device, and I enjoyed my experience. Having the performance that I needed to carry out the tasks that I was trying to get accomplished. And of course, being that this device has a very small footprint, especially when folded down, it was just a really nice experience for on the go device. So the performance for me was really good. I know that I'm not going to be able to edit a very intricate videos on this device without seeing some performance issues. And I also know that gaming was going to be a little bit of a struggle on this device as well. So I brought in my kids and we installed Fortnite and a few other games on this device to play and see what the experience was going to be like. Of course, I have this device and I can compare it against my PC, which has a first gen Threadripper chip in it and a 1080 Ti, as well as the Surface Studio Pro laptop. And we'll talk about that in another video. But the performance on gaming was OK. I did get usually a pretty consistent 60 frames per second when my kids were gaming in Fortnite, sometimes dropping down into the 40s in intricate scenarios down into the 30s. And a very few times did it drop down into the 20s, which of course, that is just kind of unplayable when you're playing a game like that, trying to get anything accomplished. If your frame rates are dropping down that low, you're going to be struggling at accomplishing anything in those games. Yes, you can game on this. It's just not going to be as great of an experience as something with more performance. But the fact that you can game on something like this and have decent performance, the fans were not really spinning up on this device at all. It was working hard, but not showing that it was working hard as I experienced when utilizing games like Fortnite and editing video on other devices where the fans were running heavily and utilizing a lot of power. This device is a good balance of performance while making sure that you don't end up sucking the battery down really fast. And that is something that is very common and easy to do on Windows devices is get yourself into a situation where you're utilizing a heavy load on the device and have that battery just be obliterated in no time. This device is a great balance of all of those things. So let's walk around the device itself. We've got the keyboard attached here. And if we pop it down, we've got the stylus 
And so I bought the stylus and the keyboard package. What's really great is uh, this pen is fantastic. I really love the advancements that they've made in their stylus. And it's always been great. The Surface stylus has always been really good. I didn't think I was going to like this kind of flat orientation. It feels to me a lot more like a contractor's pencil than it does a stylus that I would utilize in this type of an environment. But I have to say, I really do like it. It's comfortable to hold. And there are instances where I want to hold it in its wide format and then instances where I want to pinch it in a, a more narrow format, just depending on whether or not I'm writing or I'm trying to draw or do something like that, which I'm not good at. So I have to say, I just really like the stylus, whether I'm here in Microsoft Whiteboard, just sketching out or drawing, or if I'm using OneNote, the experience of utilizing this as a pen on the device is really great and just a fantastic experience. And the Surface has always been known for that, but they continue to improve the experience. I also really like how the eraser works. You push down a little bit and erase and it, there's a tactile response there because you push it down a little bit and there's pressure sensitivity to the eraser as well. So a great experience there. When I fold the device up and then fold the kickstand on the back down, it becomes a very thin device. On this side, we have the proprietary Surface connection that works not only with the charger, but also with the Surface dock. And I do have the Surface dock and I utilized it with this device. It makes expandability much easier when you're at the desk because on this side of the device, we have two USB type C ports and that is all you get. You're not getting any card reader, which in the past there was a micro SD card reader on this device and they don't include that anymore. With this device, it's a must to have some sort of expandability and the Surface Dock is a nice dock for that because it connects with the Surface Connect over here on the side of the device, even though it's kind of awkwardly hanging off the side of your tablet. It's charging, it's providing connectivity for additional USB-C and USB-A type devices. It's a must have with a device like this so that I can then just one pin quick connect and take my device. I don't have to utilize the USB type C ports over on the other side of the device for anything because I can plug everything into the dock and then one connect and one disconnect to grab my device and go is an excellent experience. So overall, is this device worth it? Well, it starts out at $1,000, which is a pretty good buy considering you're getting something that runs full Windows and is capable of running most Windows applications. However, if you're gonna do anything moderate to heavier lifting, I do highly recommend that you go with at least the i5 or the i7 device because you're gonna need that performance. If this is gonna be your tablet and your laptop, you're going to need that additional performance if you're going to do anything beyond moderate web browsing, if you need software for work, if you need to utilize a lot of different applications, or perhaps even do some photo or video editing, you're definitely going to need a device with higher specs. And you may have to sacrifice and not get the color of your choice like I did. I wish that I had just gone with the Platinum because I want the 32 gigs of memory and I want the one terabyte of storage. I'm already running out of space on this device after having installed some software and some games and synced over some of the necessary files that I utilize on a day-to-day -day from Dropbox. I'm already left with about 15% storage left on this device. 512 gigabytes just is not much for most of us these days. So I've got links to this down in the description description below. Definitely check out the pricing, the different options available as performance and the colors. Utilizing those links below helps support the channel and make sure to stick around because I'm going to be comparing this against the Microsoft Surface Studio Pro laptop and also comparing it against the M2 iPad Pro as well. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to answer or for me to clarify for you, definitely ask down in the comment section below. I'll make sure to jump down there and answer as many of those as I can. But if this video is useful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I put out new videos. I like looking at devices like this, so if there's one that you think I should check out next, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.